Hello friends, so you might have already heard about blockchain. Blockchain is said to be biggest invention after internet itself. It is said that blockchain has potential to disrupt many industries. So what exactly is blockchain? If it is so important, everyone should understand it right? Today I am going to explain you about blockchain. Well, before we jump into blockchain, we should understand that how an application works. Any application whether it is a Facebook or WhatsApp or any mobile banking app, it has a front end which interacts with the user and a back end which stores the data of the user. This back end is called database. Now this technique is being used ever since first application was built over the internet. Application talks to database, get the data from database, show it to users, gets the data from users and stores in the database and so on. This is called centralized database approach where a single centralized database stores everything. Now let me ask you a question. We all know we have advanced so much in internet and technologies. Now most of the things are being done online whether it is banking or shopping or communication. But have you ever wondered why we still can't do some things online like voting? Wouldn't it be great if you could just vote in an election right from the comfort of your home? What exactly is stopping us from building such application? Any guesses? Yes right, trust. If you don't know what's going on behind the scenes, would you trust the results of the election? What if someone modifies the data behind the scenes? Wouldn't it be great if I can vote online and also can verify that what is going on behind the scenes? This was not possible until few years but now it is possible. Blockchain makes it possible. With blockchain technology you don't need to trust any third party or anyone. It removes the trust factor required in such transactions. But then who will keep the records of my transactions? Who will approve and say this transaction is really genuine? In blockchain, people like me and you do this job. They just see the transactions and its authenticity and then approve or reject it. You can think of blockchain as a database which is open to everyone and anyone can verify what data is present in it. Think of it like an eBay platform. When you have to buy something from a seller on eBay, how do you decide if a seller is good or bad? You check the reviews and ratings given by other people right and then decide whether this seller is authentic or not. Here eBay can be considered as a central authority. eBay might tell you that the seller is good but chances are you might not trust eBay because that seller might have influenced eBay. This is a problem with centralized approach. But when you see thousands or peers just like you and me who gave 5 star ratings to the seller, you know that this seller is authentic. This is called distributed approach. Here you don't need to blindly trust the seller as you can see other peers who have approved the seller. Blockchain kind of works in a similar way. Instead of saving data at a single central location, it stores data in different computers across the globe which is called nodes. It uses a technology which makes sure all the data remains in sync with each other. Whenever a new data has to be added in it, it is copied across the nodes. This is the job of these nodes or peers to make sure their database is in sync with others. Now here is the core of how this technology works. When new transactions comes that has to be added in the blockchain database, they don't just get added by anyone. Instead people or nodes across the globe compete with each other to add the data into the database. Everyone has to show a proof of work in order to be eligible to add their block into the database. Everyone in the network compete with each other to solve a mathematical puzzle. The one who first solves this puzzle first gets the opportunity to add their block in the blockchain database. This process of finding solution to the puzzle is called mining. Miners who first solves the puzzle first gets rewarded for his work. When someone founds the solution to the puzzle, they add their block in the blockchain. Others just verifies if the person has found the correct answer and then updates their own copy of blockchain database. Any fraud or invalid data is rejected and never added to the blockchain. This approach makes the blockchain technology hacking proof. In order to solve this puzzle, one has to have a really really fast computer. Now to understand the actual puzzle, you need to understand cryptography but for now, you can think of this puzzle as a Rubik's Cube puzzle. 
the computers should be able to make thousands and thousands of combinations per second in order to solve the puzzle quickly. With hundreds of thousands of powerful computers across the network, trying to solve the puzzle together, it becomes extremely hard for a hacker to hack the system because to do so, you need more power than most powerful computers on the earth. Well, this kind of explains why the hacker can't add an invalid data into the database but now you must be thinking, as blockchain is an open database in which everyone can see what is stored and what is going on so why can't a hacker just modify the existing data stored there? Where is the security? Like in our voting example, if anyone can see who voted whom then it won't be good thing right? And if anyone can add new data, can't I just go and add my own fake data? Who will prevent me from doing that? Well, this is where blockchain shines off. All the transactions listed on blockchain are completely anonymous. Basically all you see on blockchain database is data being exchanged between numbers or IDs which is also called public key. There is no way to identify a person from this public key. Think of it like this. Just imagine there is a big array of lockers and each locker has a unique identifier or a public key. Now each locker belongs to a person but no can tell whose locker is this just by seeing the public key. Now, when transaction has to happen, all you see if some masked people coming into this room, taking some money from one locker and putting into the other locker. Then another person coming and taking money from his locker and leaving the room. All you know on blockchain is which address has which information or which address has how much money. But you don't know who kept it there. So the transactions are completely anonymous. Every person has a special key called private key can which can unlock their locker. So only person who has private key for their locker can unlock it and get the information or money stored in it. No one else can take the money. Think of it like a regular lock and key. Public key identifies the locker and private key unlocks the locker. Like you can tell anyone which one is your locker. In the same way you can tell everyone your public key. But like you won't give your locker keys to anyone, you won't give your private keys to anyone. Because essentially anyone having your private key can access your locker and can access your information or money stored in it. Now you might be thinking, this all sounds good by why can't anyone hack the system? What if I just break any of the locker and take out the money or change the information stored there? Well this is where cryptography comes in. Blockchain is designed in such a way that hacking or changing the data incorrectly is almost impossible. To understand this, think of blockchain as a stack of blocks like this with each block containing some information. Now every block in this stack is linked to the other block. So in this example, the yellow block is linked to the bottom red block and the blue block is linked to the yellow block. The top red sphere block is linked to the purple block. So when you try to change the purple block, you need to remove the red block. But imagine if you need to change the yellow block, basically you need to remove the top red sphere block, the purple block, the orange block, the green block, the blue block and then only you can change the yellow block. And notice that that miners are continuously building these blocks on top of each other so the hacker has to be really fast in doing this which is almost impossible. In real world, the blocks look something like this. If you see, every block has a link to the previous block and they are kind of linked with each other forming a chain of blocks. That is why it is called blockchain. Each block contains several transaction information. This is called a ledger. Now even if someone manages to change a block and add some incorrect information in that then what? Well this is where the concept of distributed ledger comes in. Each of the blockchain stack or ledger is distributed across the nodes all over the world. If anyone tries to change any block in any one of the ledger it would immediately be visible to all the other ledgers because it would not match with the other ledgers and the fraudulent data would never come into the blockchain database. This is how the blockchain technology works. Now there is some more deep concepts in blockchain but this was a high level overview of blockchain. I hope you must have got some basic idea by now, you might have heard of Bitcoin. It is just one application built using blockchain technology. Possibilities are endless with blockchain technology. If you have any questions. 
please post in the comments section below. Thank you.